So the summer when I bought my house, everything was gray. I mean, the stairs were gray, the walls were gray. They had painted the original hardwood gray. It was a lot of gray. I didn't really hate gray, but then knowing that everything was gray, I feel like I started to hate it. So after we had tackled painting all the rooms came the tedious task of painting the hallway. There are so many doorways that you have to cut almost all of it. So uh, it was sort of one of the last things I wanted to tackle, but eventually we had some free time and I decided to start painting. So the hallway was actually a bit of a lighter gray than what was in like the bedrooms, which I was thankful for. It still needed two coats, but I mean, we got through it. On the walls, I used the same color throughout my house. You guys probably already know by now, that is Simply White by Benjamin Moore. I ended up using a satin in this hallway uh, just because of the dogs. It's a lot easier for me to clean and it's a high traffic area, so I did go with the satin. So yeah, I don't know what to say. Here's more painting montages. How many montages have you guys seen me paint so far this year? A lot, and if you're tired of seeing them, imagine how <laughs> tired I am of doing them. Oh my goodness, but I think there's only like two rooms left. So after that, I had to tackle the baseboard. You're seeing the baseboard in a really bad state right now. And the baseboard got quite a bit damaged because of the heat gun that we used on the floors when we were refinishing them. So the color I'm using on these baseboards is from the Aura line, Benjamin Moore. We're using a semi-gloss finish and this is in the color Oxford White. All the trim in my house is Oxford White. So I had to give them a coat. I ended up giving them two coats because in certain spots, they obviously were a little bit worse than others. So two kind of was good. You might be wondering why I'm showing you all of this painting of the hallway while I'm doing a staircase makeover video. And that's because I didn't know what to do with this footage. And in order to get to the stairs, I needed, oh, okay, here's a montage of my butt. I do realize this is a not a good angle in a minute. Um, yep, Tasha came with the camera. There we go. Uh, yeah, so I do, I, I do realize like this is kind of boring footage to watch, but I had to finish this hallway so that I could start to make my way down to the stairwell. So the stairwell had to be painted, the stairs needed to be painted. I wanted to just start making my way downstairs. So I decided to start by, you know, working on that upstairs hallway. Welcome to my extremely dark hallway. There's no window in the door and there's no window down here. So it's just super dark and gloomy. Um, even the stairs y'all, even the stairs are gray. So you can see it's like super duper gloomy and uh, it's time to tackle this stairwell, which is extremely high. I have my ladder there. Um, it's not going to be fun. But we shall get her done. I've already like done some patchwork stuff on here. So it's time to get to cutting, time to get to painting. I know this doesn't look so bad on camera, but man, I, I'm i not even afraid of heights, but this was scary. It got really high. Like I had to get all the way to the top of the stairwell and it was pretty scary. So anyways, I'm glad that we bought this ladder when we moved out because uh, it came in handy and I was able to get all the way up here in the stairwell. But man, I was like sweating by the time I got off here because my, just my like knuckles were like straight up gripping onto anything and just like my feet were like gripping onto the ladder. This was such a nerve wracking experience, but I'm glad I did it because now I know that I can do it in future, you know, future painting. So then I just used a roller with a big old stick on it and um, ended up painting the, the wall. I didn't really worry about if paint got on the stairs because I knew that we were going to paint them eventually. So I didn't even bother covering them. Again, the stairs were also gray. So here's more painting montage for you. I hope you enjoy. Will I ever paint something not white? Um, yeah, I, I definitely will. But here's the thing. I love to decorate with color and I think when you paint things white and you decorate with color, I'm a really indecisive person. So I think it's easier than changing an entire wall color. Good morning, everybody. Today is finally the day that literally I've been waiting for since I moved into this place. And that is the, the gray stairs. Today, I am going to start work on these stairs. I ordered some runners that are gonna go down the middle of the stairs because it's really hard for Hotch to go down the stairs, so I'm thinking a carpet would be good. It's stunning, it's so beautiful. 
but I need to paint these to match that white up there. We only have one bathroom, <laughs> so I can't just like paint the stairs and not use them for like a couple days while they dry. So I'm thinking of just painting like each side of the stairs so that we can still use them, go up and down them, and then the runner's gonna cover the middle anyways. So that's my thought process here. I have just vacuumed them. And now I'm gonna have to like put up some plastic. I'm gonna spray them because I'm lazy. So I'm gonna put some plastic up and then we'll get to spraying. I've put plastic up before and it's really hard to get the plastic attached to the painter's tape and also attached to the wall. So I've learned that it's just sort of easier if you just put the painter's tape on the wall first and then you tape on the plastic after. So I don't know, that's just what works for me. It seems to be a lot easier. So I put the painter's tape on the stairs and then I got this roll of plastic. I had this roll of plastic since I painted my studio and it kind of like stuck to the wall, super nice. I decided I was going to do this with a sprayer. Uh, if you don't have a sprayer I do highly recommend them they might seem scary but they're seriously not I just fill up this little container and I put the lid on and then I attach the gun to the little container um, it's, it comes with like disposable little things so if you don't want to wash out the container you can just throw it out but I just wash mine because it lasts longer so I'm just clicking it on to the gun um, it plugs into like an extension cord but there's this little air valve here you have to open it and then you have to squeeze your little container which is just like made of a soft plastic squeeze all of the air bubbles out so you'll basically have no air in it and then uh, you're able to like close that latch once all the air is out and like you're good to go what I think you really have to consider when you're using a sprayer is there's still a lot of setup involved in using one like yes the painting process is is quite quick but you do have to do the you know the plastic the painters tape the setup is quite extensive so sometimes for smaller jobs I don't feel like it's worth it but for other ones I feel like it is so I let the stairs dry for about two days before we went ahead with anything else and then I got some rug pad from Home Depot this entire roll was only $40 and the leftover I actually was able to use in our our closet for a rug I put in there, a uh, five by seven rug. So none of this went to waste. I've seen that some people do the rug pad and some people don't. From my personal opinion from doing this, I would say do the rug pad. It's easy to skip because it's an extra step and you're like, I don't need that. But I would say do it because it helps the longevity of the rug. So you're putting all of your weight onto the rug pad and it's causing less of a pull on the rug itself. So I did my research. I just think it was a good idea. And also it's just super comfy. So again that's what I'm thinking that's what I'm that's what I would tell you guys to that's what I would tell my friends and family to do um, use the rug pad so I cut a piece of padding for each step I made them slightly smaller like two inches smaller on the sides um, than the runner actually is and then also um, from the front of the stair and the back of the stair I took another like two inches off because you want to be able to staple into the stair not through the rug pad and the runner you want to staple directly into the wood so that's why I have made the pads just a little bit smaller I tested out the padding and I found that if you were to put the purple side up it's a better grip like it doesn't slip around so I'm sure there's some rhyme or reason to that but regardless so then we went through and we centered all of the rug pads on the stairs and just started like stapling them on. I started stapling in the middle and worked my way out so that I didn't have any bubbling, that kind of thing. There's a lot of talk of what to, like what kind of stapler to use. And I've seen people use all different kinds of staplers. So the handheld ones, um, the electric ones, the air ones. Personally, I believe that if you're going to use one of the handheld, like non-powered ones, you're gonna have to, you're gonna end up uh, hammering like most of your staples in for Further. This one worked great. We only had to like hammer a couple staples in, but otherwise it worked really well. Would I have liked to use an air one? Yes, but I had this one and this one did the job. And so I would recommend like a DIY. This, this one works. Mine's by Milwaukee. Currently right now I'm at a place called End of the Roll and they sell, I guess, I think I'm kind of making this up, but like leftover carpet, uh, runners, flooring, you can still get like a lot, but you have to, but sorry, but it's at a lower cost. We really want to do the stairs and basically to, to order like custom, it's going to be around like four or $500 to do a runner down the stairs, which we really want because Hotch has fallen down the stairs twice 
now we're very careful with him going down them. So um, you can get like a full runner for carpets at this place for like $100. But I've been to two other ones. I did see one I kind of liked, but um, it just like depends. So I'm at one I haven't been to before. I'm gonna look and see what they have. Um, and then after that, I have to get gas. So I'm just gonna take you guys along today. Today's like an errand day. Let's go. The footage that you're seeing here is from months upon months upon months ago and I was feeling very cheap when I was doing this runner thing. I think because I felt rushed to get this runner in for Hotch. Then I stopped looking for months and months and months and then I found one on Wayfair that I loved. I needed three of them so it was going to be kind of expensive. but. It just goes to show you that if you wait, something you love, you will find and uh, you don't have to rush everything. So anyways, if you guys are interested in the rug that I did get, I'm going to link it down below. Okay guys, so we're about to start with the uh, actual runner install. We've cut out these little blocks to keep us um, centered with the rug. So basically what's that, what that's going to do is make sure that as we go down the stairs, we don't veer off. So we have one on this side, we have one on this side. Saw that in a tutorial. <laughs> Um, so then we're gonna start by stapling under this. I've already staple, have two staples in that. I'm gonna put another staple in. And then we're just gonna keep going. So yeah, Michael, can you <laughs> film the builder? So I have this tool, it's called a stair tool pro, I don't know. But that's what's gonna help us get this in to this crevice. You can use a hammer. I feel like a lot of people might think that they don't need this stair tool but, and I definitely was one of those people, but I'm so happy that I got it because it really just made sure we got that rug in there tight and, and super nice. So I would suggest to invest in one. Um, so basically it was really hard to show you guys how to do this, but I stapled under the lip, I stapled at the back of the stair, I stapled at the sides of the stair. The only place I wasn't stapling was the front of the stair. It was, it was pretty easy, like once you got the hang of it, it was pretty simple. So see how I'm taking the staple up there? I ended up actually using a handheld for the rest of the stairs because I couldn't really get this staple gun under the lip. And when you staple under the lip, that's what hides the staples. So it was pretty simple. It was pretty easy. It took us a while. Um, the big problem with these runners were that, <laughs> they obviously look at it, it doesn't fit. Like we needed to buy three of these runners to do all of our stairs. So of course that meant that we were going to have to cut some of the runner off. So here's how we adjoined the runners. We cut off this border off of both rugs so that it more so looked like one continuous rug. If we had left the border on, you would have looked at the stairs and been like, oh, that's definitely two runners. But now, because there is no border, it just completely looks like, you know, one huge runner, which I think is a better look. I'm not a big fan of when it looks like you have multiple runners. So, I mean, it worked great. We used like a rotary cutter and it worked great. And then we just made sure that when we put on the next runner, we like really pushed it up. We also made sure that where we were cutting the rug, we ended up under the lip of a stair because you see see where I'm putting this? Like you're not going to be able to tell, there's not gonna be as much um, like foot traffic on that part of the stair. So I would say try to end up there. You might have to cut off a little bit of your first rug and your second rug, but I really think that it's like a good look and I'm happy that we did it that way. Again, this video wasn't meant to be a tutorial, but if you do have any questions, I am more than happy to help out. Like if you plan on doing your own stairs or you're in the midst of doing your own stairs, like leave a question down below and I will help you as best as I can. Sometimes it's a little bit easier for me to see your question if you send me a DM on Instagram. My handle is just at Tasha Leland and I will help you. Like I'm no professional, but but I do, but I did, you know, learn a lot throughout this. So I wanna obviously help you guys and share that with you. But I mean, my stairwell is tiny. It was really hard to, to give a tutorial. And honestly, as I was doing this, I was no pro. I didn't know. I feel like I could make a video now, but as I was doing this, I was also learning. So I didn't intend for this video to be a tutorial. And that's why I don't have like the best shots to show you. Okay, are you guys ready to see these? So 
so here is what the final stairs turned out looking like. They look amazing, I'm so happy. So basically what we did was we kept the border on the top stair and then this first carpet ended about here and then we cut the border off of the second runner so that kind of just looks like it continues on with this pattern. And then this rug, I believe, oh goodness, I believe it goes down to this red step and we liked sort of that there's a lot of red when you look at the stairs. Kind of gives you that feeling of like a vintage rug, you know what I mean? Even though these ones are from Wayfair. But when you come upstairs and you look down, it actually looks like way more pink. So from upstairs you can really only see this little section of red and then the rest is like a pink staircase. So I'm gonna link this runner down below if anyone's interested in getting one of these runners for themselves. It goes on sale pretty often so I'd wait until it's on sale. But yeah, they turned out so good. So we're like a step in the right direction. You know what? I just like walked up these stairs like three times. A lot of breath. But now I can decorate like the hallway and like move on and Hodge can go up the stairs a lot easier on his little paw paws. But yeah, that's what they look like. I hope you guys enjoyed watching the stair makeover. I'm excited to get to other makeovers. I have so much content on every memory card I have to just show you guys with the house. So it's nice to have something else completed. But that is gonna be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed hanging out. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.